Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Anahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil kareem amma ba'd. In our last class, we discuss um, the economic thought of uh, Ibn Hazm. Uh, we actually started uh, talking about his biography. So we talked about his uh, brief life history. Uh, we talked about his, um, especially the uh, factors that, you know, he became he became the scholar and then we talked about his major works especially we talked about uh, his, uh, his, his tremendous work <clears throat> so today uh, we are going to talk about his uh, <clears throat> thought process yeah so whatever the thought that relevant relevant to economics uh, as I told you he was a um, polymath which means that he was uh, expertise in so many fields so you you cannot find him uh, write uh, something only talks about uh, something related to the economics but he wrote everything together and then there are salient points that we can actually look into it and uh, these are the few uh, um, sections that we actually can discuss so these are the economic ideas we talk on we're gonna talk about his basic needs and poverty and uh, what is it is thought on zakah and what is his thought on taxes and uh, what about the land tenure systems uh, is there something that he said or he wrote something new so let us uh, discuss all this so when it comes to uh, basic needs and poverty according to uh, ibn hazm uh, it is based on uh, four uh, standards of living for a human being so it goes like food drink clothing and shelter so so yes he 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 started mentioning it in his book about this food drink clothing and shelter like everybody else um but we need to know that uh, this is quite early so so we know that the 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 the, the, the uh, we, we we know we we know these terms but um it's, it was used it comes under the basic needs. It is something that uh, those scholars, they already had the idea to talk about. The food and drink uh, should be uh, sufficient for the provision of health and energy. Uh, this is also one of his idea. And, uh, uh, you know, the clothing should be sufficient to cover aura and suitable for both season hot and cold and also the shelter should be such that it protects it protects the person from effects of the weather and provides a reasonable degree of privacy so i think i i, I, I can see that you know even um, still there are some countries are still you know building houses for its citizens so if you if you happen to be in some european countries it is it is it is there in in their practice so if you are a citizen of that particular country, um, you should have a house. And inside your house, uh, you and your family should be there, not, not two or three families. The additional members of the family should go and uh, stay in another house. Also, um, there is a monthly remuneration. Uh, monthly package that they give okay let's say if there is no work that you are not working if you are not working there are still there are some countries uh, you know finding you and sending you the money for your own uh, you know for your for your sustenance let's say you are retired uh, what we call pension it comes to you come to your door so these are the system that uh, you know some Europe Europe countries are proud of today that they are doing. Um, in fact, uh, it could be a, it could be a problem for some countries where they have more elderly people. Uh, this is also a, a conspiracy theory. I'm not so sure about it, but uh, it's, it's it's written somewhere in many articles. You know, there are some countries are very old in the sense that uh, the young people are less and the old people are more you know the elderly people so now the government has to 
pay everything for those elderly people so some in some places it is also difficult they find that difficult economically speaking but it is also at the same time it is also good considered as a good uh, you know respecting the human being at the most so that uh, passing and, and and giving him providing all this uh, basic necessity it is something that ibn hazm is actually already talked about it a uh, thousand years ago right um, even he went uh, uh, to, to, to another level. Uh, this is where um, uh, he is uh, becoming different from other, uh, other scholars. You know, he even went and said, uh, the rich are obliged to provide sustenance to the poor living in their region. So this is where, um, uh, you know, the communism thought is coming. Uh, of course, it, communism came later, you know, we are talking about a scholar who is a thousand years old. Um, so this is a kind of uh, idea, you know, uh, you need to take from the rich and give it to the poor. Uh, it's like a Robin Hood, yeah? <laughs> if they try to neglect or avoid it or deflect from this responsibility, the head of the state must compel them to part with some of their wealth for the maintenance of the poor and the needy. So I'm just reading his own writing from Muhalla bil Asar. He, he wrote himself. This is his writing. He also want to differentiate from Zakah. Zakah not necessarily is, uh, if it is not sufficient to satisfy the basic need, then tax must be levied. So he say, in case of Zakah is not sufficient to satisfy the basic needs of the poor, tax should be levied upon the rich Muslims to provide the poor with enough food, reasonable clothing and accommodation. So I think this is something that, um, you know, uh, this is something against the capitalism what we are having today, but this is something good also because uh, you, 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 you take care of the entire society and you give them the basic thing. We are not asking, Ibn Hazm is not asking uh, uh, them uh, to equally distribute. See, this is where you need to see that the difference. Uh, what what Ibn Hazm tried to say. He didn't say that. Okay, the 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 rich people should come and give everything that they have, and then it should be equally um, divided among poor people. No, he didn't say that. Right? That 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 could be a. a that could be the ideology that could be the idea that what uh, today uh, the communism is having it it's like you know divide everything and then provide everything so that's not the case here here what we are talking is actually uh, he is still he, ibn hazm he says uh, that uh, uh, yes adam no problem after five minutes yeah so here we are saying that um, uh, this is something that um, uh, to think about it, you know, if there is a poor people in your region and they don't have enough basic needs, they don't have enough food, drink, clothing and shelter, you should come forward and then you should pay, you should give something from your wealth so that, you know, this thing can be settled. It's not, he's asking one person, the entire, the entire region people, region wealth people so you need to know that why they becoming wealth is because of everybody especially the, the rich people they are rich because uh, they were able to sell something to the poor people uh, because without, without it uh, how they become rich so they have already given something and took something so now it's time to make sure that at least that the people in the region are having enough uh, standard of life all right so this is something so this is not completely communism he doesn't talk communism but 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 it looks like you know the word that sometime he is as i told you last time uh, the, the, this is the one of the scholar who has always criticized who fiercely criticizing someone so sometime uh, the words can be taken out of the context and then can be you know published and then can be can be can be portrayed that he is one of the communists or maybe liberal 
but that's not there anyway uh, again we will discuss about it at the end of end of the class whereby we need to also correct the means misconception that even has pursued socialist tendencies okay non fulfillment of the basic needs is in fact a fundamental indicator sorry it is in indicator yeah, indicator to the exercise of poverty a poverty may accrue in the situation where the level of needs increases faster than the income necessary for the fulfillment of basic needs so he also give the definition of poverty and also he talks about the the the, the cause and uh, the cause for the poverty how, how how from where the poverty comes it comes where the level of needs increases faster than faster than the income necessary there is income coming but when the level of needs increases faster than the income then you know you 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 you, you see you see the poverty so now uh, i understand uh, you know uh, the initiative that we are taking uh, to 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 eliminate poverty to eliminate hunger you know by giving something right especially in ramadan i think you 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 have seen this because only in ramadan I mean, ramadan comes and everybody want to play uh, i mean i mean sorry i play pay <laughs> everybody wants to pay everybody want to give funds everybody want to spend for this but after ramadan <clears throat> the, the 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 enthusiasm is not there why it is why it is that only in ramadan things are happening did, did we become selfish because we think that okay when i do in ramadan i get multiple rewards maybe because every time whatever that i do the worship in i get 70 times it folds 70 times so is it the reason why i even someone asked me um, ustaz can you tell me the right time to the right time to pay sadaqa in a whole day what is the right time to pay sadaqa Just look at the question yeah <laughs> i was like thinking yes there is the right time to pay sadaqa is when there is a rightful person comes with the rightful need <laughs> it was like no 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 you have to tell me is it before maghrib or after maghrib before zuhar or after zuhar what time it is after zawal i said unfortunately i'm not the astrologist <laughs> unfortunately i don't know the astrology because i don't practice astrology but this is what i know if there is a need if someone needs you go there and you become the help that is the best time to pay rather than looking for the timing to to make sure that uh, you are fulfilling your duty you know that's, that's not that's not how you eliminate poverty so here i would like to i want you to understand what exactly according to his definition of poverty what ibn hazm try to tell it is not that you only provide sustenance to somebody it is not only that you pay to somebody you give food to somebody maybe he is not hungry now what about tomorrow he will become hungry again this is what happening now we pay something in ramadan so in ramadan people are happy they are getting it but what about after ramadan starting from shawwal dhul qada dhul hijja so these are the months that they don't have anything they don't have the right thing what's going to happen so this is where we need to go for system thinking because if we understand uh, the way that ibn hazm is and un has understood the poverty comes because where the level of needs increases faster than the income necessary for the fulfillment of basic needs if we can understand this and try to bring the economics based on this because we have the data what today today when we are uh, you know doing um Look at look look at look at look at the uh, market today. How market works? How market works? You know that each and every um, shopping that you do online, 
and then every time you click something that you want to buy this or you there is a data that you know every company is getting it the company is buying data from social media so that they actually can supply according to your interest am i right this is what's happening today in market this is not something rocket science this is how people do because you 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 you, you check something you google something the next moment you go to you go to facebook you will see the advertisement there how it is happening so it's not rocket science anymore it's quite simple so because you, your data has been recorded and then it's been kept in a way uh, that you know um, uh, can uh, the, the, the other companies can have access to it and then they can actually promote their product to you and then they make you buy until you buy <laughs> they don't stop it's not only when you go to Facebook, even every time you, you search something in the internet, websites, you go to some website, suddenly you will see, you will see, you will see the advertisement of, you know, buying index every time. So what, what it tells you? It tells you that the, the, the company is able to uh, extract data from you and then it is, it is happening that, you know, they can actually promote and then they can actually fulfill your need if that is the case if that is how it is if that is what market can do why it is that why it is that um you know why we cannot why why market cannot also do this kind of data talking about how many people under poverty and uh, what is their problem and according to their problem, why government, I mean, cannot supply the need. For example, someone becoming poor, according to what Ibn Hazm says, someone becoming poor because he, he is not able to, his income is not able to, his income is not able to fulfill his need. So there is a gap between income fulfilling need and level of need. When the level of need increase faster than the income, the coming income, this is where actually the basic need, there is no fulfillment of the basic need. So now, if there is any mechanism that someone can come up with and then promote that in economic system, promote that in economic system, stating that, okay, these items cannot go beyond this price right these items should come together with how a person is earning okay i agree even this this this, this is the reason why alhamdulillah uh, some government including our government here is uh, very strict in increasing uh, the necessity items for example sugar oil flour you know these are the things including petrol you know these are things. this is how uh, this is how you know they they started understanding um, entire thing uh, how to how how to differentiate between this uh, level of need and then the level of income right again there is another problem that we are having today is a kind of you know uh, showing you or promoting something to you so that you are eager to buy this thing is not stopping it it keeps on coming every day i do something every day i open something it's almost there it is actually um it is actually um uh, you know making me uh, to 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 do to do that to buy that it's a kind of it's a kind of you know you show you show ice cream to the children and they always come behind you so this is how it's happening the world is changing because of that sometimes we buy unnecessary things and the end of the month, we don't have money to buy the necessary thing. So this is something that uh, we need to think about. I hope, inshallah, you understood the idea. I think, I think, even uh, the, the the current economic system is actually based on that, and there is there is more room to improve. Uh, that's the reason why uh, we are discussing uh, the classical scholars' uh, ideas, so that actually you can bring some improvement. So hopefully, inshallah, someone can write on it. The next one is actually zakah. When it comes to zakah, um, 
Um, again, as I told you, he's a fearful, uh, fear, I'm sorry, fearless <laughs> scholar. He never afraid of anyone. So he's, he, he, in fact, uh, he also wrote in his book that if someone denied to pay zakah as an obligation, so he should be declared murtad. Uh, murtad is actually apostate. So you, you know what happened if someone call you murtad, then you know the government those days, uh, or, uh, you know, um, there's a qisas for murtad and everything, and the hudud for murtad. It's a punishment, a severe punishment. She so also says punishment must be meted out and to those who still persist in opposing these obligations, either hiddenly or explicitly, who should have and have not paid the zakah due during his or her lifetime, should have that obligation to be fulfilled from his or her wealth. This is something, again, um, uh, something again uh, controversial because um, what about your zakah that you didn't pay before 10 years that you were you you, you didn't pay you 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 were eligible to pay but you didn't pay so according to ibn hazm it should be collected from you uh, so it has there, there must be a um, there must be a calculation system and then it should be collected like the way that taxes are being collected such unpaid zakah is a debt a form of debt to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those entitled to zakah so it's like a debt and this debt is actually to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's, it's a kind of um, ibn hazm is promoting that you know you better you solve it here right now as you are here so you go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to answer it so better you you, you 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 solve it here so the unpaid zakah is never written off so you can see that how uh, strong that he is uh, for the institute of zakah uh, that's because he, he 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 kept on thinking about uh, you know uh, paying this money to the needful uh, poor people the next one it talks about taxes okay in this also there is um uh, yes, of course, you can talk about taxes. He was very much concerned with the fact of justice in the tax system. For him, before anything else is considered, the interests of the people must be considered when planning to impose tax compulsorily. Ibn Hazm was especially concerned over the nature of the tax collection system. I think he talks. Uh, uh, he talks uh, things about you know the the way of collection. Uh, he also mentioned that uh, the lowest branch of the finance department was located in village and supervised by a divisional head called Amil. The harvest being ready in the field was the field was inspected and the value of the produce was estimated by an officer called Ashar. So th th these are the these are the what we call it uh, designation has been given the roles to play. When it comes to tax, so he called Amil, the one who um, uh, go and supervise the, the village. And then the one who um, uh, inspect, you see, the one inspecting, inspecting the produce, whether uh, the, he has to go there and then do the estimation. Uh, okay, how much land you have and how much crop you have, so how much you have to pay the tax. Uh, he used to be called Ashar. I think you know the word Ashur. Then the one who do that Ashar. There was a mutaqabil. Uh, there was a mutaqabil. There was a mutaqabil to collect market and other duties within the fiscal area of his uh, Qabala. Qabala is actually his area. In order to check these officers from cheating and charging more than the due, strict vigilance was kept on them. Even even this, uh, so the one who collect, it is called mutaqabbil, right? So even for this amil and uh, ashar and uh, mutaqabbil, these are the officers, uh, comes under the um, tax tax industry, tax ministry. So there is also a minister should be there to make sure that all these, uh, these, these high profile authorities not to, to 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 abuse any of the fund 
So this is all actually he wrote a lot about it. Uh, I think uh, absence of ethics can bring um, Okay, absence of ethics can bring about the downfall of even the best structural and administrative system because in the final analysis, the system must still be run by human beings who may not possess the proper ethics commensurate with the beauty with the beauty of the administration. So this is what actually he, he talks about it. So he gave a lengthy um, passages and he wrote about this. Uh, uh, you know, even he brought some uh, examples that was happening uh, during his time. Okay, this is what actually uh, he talks about taxes. Okay, finally, this is what uh, another um, controversial idea, concept from Ibn Hazm, uh, land tenure theories. Uh, what what uh, what surprising me is actually. Uh, the way that Ibn Hazm wanted to, he had he had a soft corner. He had he always favor favor to those people who actually are labors. So he's a labors man. Eh? He's a labors scholar. So when it comes to muzara, okay, you 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 heard about the musharaka, you heard about mudaraba. So this is what we call muzara, meaning to say there is a land, there is agricultural tenant. Uh, and also it's a sharecropper. So this sharecropping is actually, there is a landowner and then there is a farmer. So this farmer and uh, landowner working together because the landowner giving the land and the farmer is actually putting his effort. At the end of the day, you share the crops, you share the revenue. All right, so this is something like what we do in Murabaha, what we do in Musharaka. Similarly, it is what we call Muzara. But Ibn Hazm is actually uh, against of this system called sharecropping um, because he he thought that you know um, uh, there is a problem you know with with this uh, because it's a socio-economic significance. When he say he says that. Uh, the labor of an agricultural tenant uh, slash sharecropper is as sacred as the land of a landowner. Uh, he explicitly states that lease of a land as a predetermined exclusive share of the landlord is absolutely unlawful, whether the land is leased against a part of its produce against money or in kind. Ibn Hazm reported to have said that, this is his word, any person who holds land must cultivate it himself or give it to another tiller without charging him any rent or recompense or he must simply withhold it. So this is something, um, I, I tell you why uh, he comes up with that kind of idea because according to him, you, you should not share your um, you cannot do muzara. You should give your land because if someone is reviving your land, the outcome is actually belongs to him. Uh, the the reason why uh, he says that because there is a hadith. Uh, if there is someone, I think you you learn this hadith when we talk about this in fiqh of economics. I think we brought this hadith as well. You know when there is a land and someone is reviving the land, the, the land belong to him. And then if in case, if you remember what Hazrat Umar, what Khalifa Umar did uh, to uh, Bilal. You know, there was a land was given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Bilal. And of course, Bilal was an agricultural farmer and he was doing farming. But after the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bilal was quite busy with da'wah. So he was not able to revive his land. But he is still holding the land because the land was given by the Prophet. And Omar went to Bilal and he said, you should return the land. Because everybody said, how can you ask Bilal the land? Because the land was given by the Prophet. He said, the same Prophet said, if you don't uh, revive your land, you must give it to somebody. So then he quoted the hadith saying that, Whoever revived the land, 
he can hold, he can keep uh, the, the land. <clears throat> Meaning to say, there's a purpose of land. You cannot uh, let the land die itself. Uh, you know, it has to be fertile all the time. It has to be something that you have to use it. And then it is also a kind of uh, promoting, you know, work and labor, promoting agriculture, promoting that uh, you should be active. You have something, you should be very much active. You have thousand reasons to go out and then work. You cannot say that I don't want to work because this is what a kind of uh, promoting that if you have a land, you should work on it. And this is how uh, we actually need to uh, expand the production, especially the agricultural products. Yeah. So when it comes to understanding these hadiths, this is what Ibn Hazm says that, you know, this, this kind of muzara, what we are doing today, um, it's not something that uh, he is not permitting it. Even though majority scholar, they permit. Majority scholar, they permit it. But according to Ibn Hazm, as I told you last time, he was a Zahiri, right? So apparently whatever hadith comes, he will accept it and he will go for it. And then he will, even he will, he will fight for it, you know, in, in his, uh, in his uh, uh, bil -athar. So what I'm trying to tell, um, he says that uh, if someone uh, has a land, because, because it is, it, it is not, uh, something that uh, this is this is unfair because you have you are given land and then you make someone work hard for it and then without doing anything you are just you just try to uh, try to get the profits out of it which is actually a kind of uh, unethical this is what he concerned this is unethical uh, to 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 simply um, you know, take the profit without doing anything, uh, unless if you have spent something for the land. Uh, in 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 in, in, um, in fact, if you have spent something to uh, to to um, to level the land, or you know, uh, to, to 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 do something for the land which is actually helping the agriculture, then it's okay. But without it, the land was given to you by probably by the government or by someone maybe inheritance. So this is what he feels like this unethics. Uh, this is not ethics uh, that, you know, you ask someone to work on it and then you at the end of the day, you go and you take your share. Right. So that's that's something that he is trying to say. So there is there is there, there, there are a few things that we need to understand here. Um, there is no easy money. People today. Um, uh, if 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 uh, if Ibn Hazm is alive today, uh, if he is alive today, then I I think it will be quite tough fight amongst amongst the scholar because there are so many schemes that people are having today. Because you know at the end of the day, what they want, they just want to stay home and then take all the money. This is what we call uh, becoming smart. Uh, people today call smart. Don't do hard work. Do smart work. So we need to understand how it is actually going to be helpful if every one of us stay home and becoming smart. Every one of us say this, how, how it is possible that uh, the, the, the economy will, will flourish. Because if there is no enough production, if there is no enough production, the economy will fall. Right. So that's why um, we need to take it as a consideration, not necessarily to say it is prohibited, but at least we need to say that <clears throat> this kind of activities like, you know, doing nothing and then only um, receiving the profit. You know, this is what happening right, right now. People, if they have more money, they say if they have millions and they just put their money in their bank. It is like a fixed deposit. Huh? Even... Uh, fixed deposit is allowed but it is not always uh, promoted no one is promoting to go for the fixed deposit it is allowed for certain necessities but this uh, what happened in fixed deposit uh, you have money there and then you you just um, simply enjoying the income uh, from the bank and you are not involving in business you are not involving 
in certain activities, financial activities, uh, or manufacturing activities, or distributing activities. So what happened that, on, first of all, you are not taking part of what's happening around. The second of all, uh, you're also becoming lazy, right? So so this, this, this kind, and then, and then you will just spend whatever the money comes because you don't really know how difficult that, how difficult to get that money. So I think in a way it, it gives us, uh, it gives us an insight, it gives us uh, some insights to think about, you know, working, to understand the market and go for the real work, go, move. Huh? I know now it's difficult to move outside uh, because of the COVID-19, but you always need to think, okay, I have to get the real job, meet the real people, go to the real world, go around, learn, and then do something. If possible, produce something, manufacture something, <clears throat> create something. Yeah, creating something. So you, 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 you will love it when you see something that, uh, you know, you know, you, you have created. For example, people, people, you, you can see that even, even people want to create something in their own hand, you know, it's like a clay, right? Making their own hand, creating something and then selling. You know, you know, when, when you are, you are seeing that your product that you, you created on your own, it's selling in the market. The happiness is 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 uncountable. You, 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 the, 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 that that's a different. That's different. People are very much into today are trading, right? So buying from someone, selling to someone. But just just imagine if you become running. If you are running a restaurant and you are cooking something, it's your own recipe. You learn recipe and you are cooking and then you are selling your product to someone, and someone is eating and then telling, "Oh wow, this is very good, delicious." I give you five star. The moment you see that kind of thing, the, the happiness that you have, because you, and at the end of, at, at the end of the day, you are not just cooking for the for, for money. You are cooking for people. You are cooking for 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 people and and their and and, and their taste. So you are contributing something to towards you know the human. Um, what do we call it? You are contributing something to to to. to to the human taste, to the humanity, to the dignity of the humanity. So this is something good. You 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 should think about it. Not only thinking about trading, you know, buying from someone, add ten cent or add ten ringgit and give it to someone. You can do that, no problem. But you can you should also think about it, creating something, become the creator. Yeah. Okay. That's I think what Ibn Hazm uh, trying to tell. Uh, so I hope we understand uh, his uh, idea. Okay, this is the last one. Um, as I told you earlier, um, is it Ibn Hazm Muslim socialist or Muslim liberalist? Uh, so this is where we need to correct the misconception that Ibn Hazm pursued socialistic tendencies and liberal tendencies. So yes, you know, when um, we saw that he was fighting for the welfare of the people and um, <clears throat> he wanted to put all the taxes uh, to play their roles in alleviating the poverty. When we saw that uh, <clears throat> he was urging the state intervention, when we saw that, um, you know, the, 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 of course, the land and the land must go to the labor. You know, these are the ideas were apparently showing that uh, it looks like that he's a socialist or liberalist uh, scholar, but that's not true because um, all these, um, you know, um, uh, the, 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 the premise that he is discussing in his writing, um, you know, talking about the enjoyment, uh, you know, everything that he talks about, the labor and everything, is actually for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not actually for the class struggle. It is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, um, in, in fact, um, Ibn Hazm is also... Uh, uh, you know, talking about spending and helping others, but he never talk about dividing equally to everybody. He is not talking about it. So sociology, socialist, is economy is something that that you work, and then the government will uh, pay your needs. 
you have to only work so what happened that uh, when they wanted to start that kind of ideology in russia and other countries it didn't go well that's the reason why uh, soviet union has been uh, broken into many pieces yeah that's because it didn't work because because people lose their interest you know there is no if you don't have that capitalistic idea you you will not improve your business you won't develop it because why you have to develop it because at the end of the day you are going to get like everybody is getting so that's why um, when allah say amwalukum malukum amwaluhum maluhum because allah says that this is your commodity this is your wealth meaning to say that wealth creation is something is good always good but from that wealth creation we need to think that uh, we are taking the wealth from the people so we need to make sure that the people that we are dealing huh? uh, the people that we are dealing they also are the at their best at least at their basic necessities they are not lower than their basic necessities because we are dealing with them so this is how uh, it would be wonderful that you know uh, uh, like what we are doing today it is very good what we call csr Every big companies they have these uh, 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 corporate social responsibilities. So, this, so they put some sort of amount from their account. It's like uh, rather than paying taxes to the government, they spend some money. Uh, they give it to you as a scholarship, right? They give it to you as a fund. Sometimes even they are helping poor people in that case. So these are the things is always uh, welcomed. Um, of course, there should be some amount that we should this is not about zakat zakat is actually compulsory and we are paying only 2.5 percentage we are paying only two ringgit 50 cent out of 100 ringgit we earn 100 ringgit but we pay only two ringgit 50 cent this is compulsory and we have to pay that to the snuff this is for internal muslim community and that is only to purify your wealth just to purify zakat itself means purifying Zakat is not meant to eliminating poverty. It is not meant to eliminate uh, the absolute poverty, maybe a relative poverty. It can help you to reduce the poverty, but it's not going to eliminate poverty. That's the reason why um, Sadaqah was introduced, because this is where actually everybody has to uh, play a role in, you know, uh, transferring the fund uh, wherever it is necessary. And there is a Sadaqa Jariya is there, especially the Waqaf. Why Waqaf was introduced? This is because this is the reason, because you have a good amount of money with you before you die, you make sure that it becomes a enterprise to someone so that people can benefit from that or it can become a common or public place a common and public park, for example, or a transportation unit or a library okay not necessarily all the time it has to be masjid people think about waqaf they think about masjid paying to the masjid waqaf can be paid in so many ways prophet ﷺ period prophet Sallallahu asked uh, promoted uh, he 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 recommended to go and dig wells water wells right because supply water supply food today for example transportation today it is all actually considered a waqaf so I think uh, that's what I, I think uh, Ibn Hazm meant. Um, I hope uh, this is the idea is of course uh, it's mixed idea, but he is not actually a socialist or he is not a liberalist. Okay, so I think I hope I, I gave you something. So inshallah, if there is anything, uh, the floor is open. Uh, please come forward. You can also discuss if you have any thoughts regarding this. Uh, please go ahead and discuss with us.